One of the hallmarks of a professional portrait is the use of bokeh. The specular highlights in the outer focus areas of your frame created by the combination of great lighting and a fast maximum aperture. Of course, as professionals know, sometimes it's tricky to align these variables and you may end up with a portrait image that lacks a little something. However, with the help of Affinity Photo and a donor image, you can replicate the look and feel of bokeh in your frame, all while retaining a high degree of control on how this effect appears in your image. In reality, this offers pro photographers a second chance to get the feel and look of a portrait right and takes advantage of Affinity Photo's blending modes to make this magic come to life. Best still, this whole technique takes just a few minutes to complete and can breathe new life into portraits that would otherwise be heading for the trash can. So let's get started and with your portrait and donor images opened in Affinity Photo's photo persona, you can get started on the first job. The first image that we're going to need is our donor image. You can find these images on stock sites. What we're going to do is select all the pixels in this frame and then copy them onto our portrait image. To do this, you press Command and A to select all the pixels and you'll notice the marching ants around the frame there. Command and C to copy the pixels to the clipboard or you can just simply press edit and scroll down to copy there. And then we can close down this image and return to our portrait image. All we need to do now is press Command and V to paste the pixels on top of our portrait image. And you'll notice in the layers bin that a new layer has been created and automatically selected, ready to work on. Now, it's highly likely that the donor image may be too big or too small or not quite how you want it. So we're now gonna head back over to the toolbar and select the Move tool. And the keyboard shortcut for this is V. Press Command and minus to zoom out if you need to. And you can resize and reshape the bokeh layer to your personal taste. If you hold Alt, you'll see that you can reshape the layer proportionally so that it doesn't squish and skew and start to look weird. Now, the next step is where the real magic happens. Head back to the Layers panel and change the blending mode from Normal to Screen. This will change the way the pixels from the background portrait layer are visible. Now that you can see the effect better, it might be worth heading back to the toolbar, selecting the Move tool once more, and changing the way the bokeh sits on your image once more. The effect won't look natural if your subject's face is completely covered with bokeh, and this means some of this area needs to be removed. Head back to the Layers panel, and down at the bottom, you'll find the Mask Layer option. This is identified by a circle within a square icon. Make sure it's selected and then head back to the toolbar again. This time we're going to select the paintbrush tool and the keyboard shortcut for this is B. Make sure the brush is set to black, the hardness is set to 0% and you can change the size of the brush using the square bracket keys. With the brush set up you can now start to paint over your subject's face removing these pixels of the bokeh layer. You don't have to stick to a rigid line, you can have a bit of creative license with this as it adds an atmospheric effect to the subject's face. What we'll do now is just click the mask on and off and you can see how that has changed the portrait subject. And we'll also take the bokeh on and off to see how that's enhanced the frame. Now you may feel the bokeh effect is just a little bit too heavy. That's fine, all you need to do is head back to the layers panel and this time select the opacity bar and you can drag it from 100% down to whatever you like until you're happy with how the bokeh looks in your frame. One final job that we're going to do is to fine tune the colour of the bokeh. To do this head down to the adjustments icon at the bottom of the layers panel, click on it and from the drop down menu select HSL. Now we want this adjustment to just affect the bokeh and not our subject's face. I'm going to click on the thumbnail and drag it just to the right of the bokeh layer thumbnail. This will link in with that layer so it only affects our bokeh colour. Once you've done that, head to the slider bars and the one we want to use is hue. So we're going to drag that, you can change the colour of the bokeh, I'll go for a bit of green tinge and you can see that doesn't affect 
the subject's hair, the subject's skin in any way. There we go, let's just take one more look at where we started from and where we ended up. You'll see how using the bokeh image has introduced new life into this portrait frame. All you need to do now is head up to File, scroll down to Export, and you can save the file in your chosen format, whether that be a JPEG, TIFF, or PSD. Have fun experimenting with bokeh in your portraits, and I'll see you next time.